Well, we wanna say a huge welcome to Church at Home. My name is Miles Fidel, and we are honored that you're joining us today from wherever you are joining us. Many of you are sitting in homes together, gathered as community groups. Many of you maybe are out of town at the beach or at the lake and just enjoying a moment to be with your community and get into the Word of God together. So believe it or not, you are actually at church right now. Even if we are not gathered in a building together, we are gathered as the people of God to hear from the Word of God and lift up the name of Jesus. So I want you to get really comfortable where you are right now and wherever you're sitting or standing, could you look at the person next to you and just say, I am so glad I ended up next to you at church at home. And uh, if you're doing this all by yourself, we really hope that you are doing this with a community or with at least one other person around you. But if you are doing it by yourself, we're so glad that you're joining us and we believe God's gonna speak to you in a powerful way over the next few moments. At church, at home, our vision for this time is that we would get to encounter God in a way that we don't normally get to when we gather for three or four or five services on a Sunday. And it's one thing for me to open the Word of God and preach to you the truths about who Jesus is, but I believe something amazing happens when we gather together as the people of God and we actually engage in our Bibles and through prayer and watch God do something special. And so the focus of Church at Home today is going to be your personal time alone with God. Now, if you're new to ACC and you haven't been tracking with us, one of the things that we've been saying again and again and again is that you and I have breath in our lungs for our Heavenly Father to love us. And that's a really simple and really deep statement. And what we've been discovering is that the more you and I allow our Heavenly Father to love us, the more we are able to fill the roles God has called us to fill, and the more we are able to step into the life Jesus died for us to live. And so the key to the Christian life is being alone with God long enough for your Heavenly Father to love you and for the rest of your life to become an overflow of that time that you have experienced the love of God for yourself. This is how Jesus lived his life. And I think for so many of us, we're getting set free by that reality that the Christian life is not about earning God's approval, it's about living from the approval that's already been given by your heavenly Father. That's amazing. However, it's complicated because this side of heaven, your heavenly father, isn't seen by your physical eyes and isn't heard audibly by your ears and can't be touched physically in the moment. And so I think for a lot of us, we love hearing truths like that, but we don't really know practically how to hear from a heavenly father that we can't see, touch, or feel. And so what we hope happens over the next few moments is that all of us together gain a framework for how to spend time alone with our Heavenly Father. Now, for a lot of you, you've been following Jesus longer than I've been alive. I'm 30 years old, by the way, just in case you wanted to know if that's you. Uh, If you've been following Jesus longer than 30 years, you've been doing that longer than I've been born, and I hope that that doesn't make you feel old. Uh, I hope that that just makes you feel more experienced in this moment. We all come from different life backgrounds and seasons and all different generations and ages in the room, but we also come with different levels of expertise in our one-on-one time with the Lord. And so for some of you, you're like, I know how to spend time alone with God. I get it. I want you to humbly go through this process with us for the benefit of those who need to grow in being alone with their Heavenly Father. And so your time alone with God is going to actually assist in this moment to speak into others, to equip them and grow them in their times with God. But if you're here and being alone with God is a struggle, and I actually believe that that's true for all of us. We're all growing and learning how to hear the voice of God and catch a vision of who God is. And we're gonna go on this simple journey together to develop a framework for what it means to let God's word speak to us in a given moment. But before we jump into the word of God, I wanted us to have a moment together as a church to get our hearts ready to meet with our Heavenly Father. 
think so many times when I get alone with God, I just jump into whatever verse I happen to be reading that day or whatever book of the Bible I happen to be studying, and I make it more of a study time for information instead of a relational time for revelation. And the way to go about doing that for me and for so many of us and for the stories that we read in the scriptures is to allow music to usher us into the presence of God. A couple months ago, we released a song as a church called Heavenly Father. And the beautiful thing about this song is it reminds us of what is true about God our Father and what is true about us as His children. And I'm going to be honest, most of my times with the Lord begin with me listening to that song. Not because our church released it, but because the truths that are evident in those lyrics help me write my mind to the fact that I am not getting alone with God to receive a list of things to do from Him or to give Him a list of things I want Him to do for me. I'm getting alone with God to let my Father love me. And sometimes I think we just need a moment to breathe and take the pressure off and get rid of all distractions and be ushered into the presence of God. So as our worship pastor, Matt Cole, sings this song, we want to invite you right where you're sitting to just take a breath and prepare your heart and mind to be alone with your heavenly Father. And so as he sings, if you want to close your eyes, if you want to just watch the screen and watch the lyrics and let these words wash over you, I don't know what that looks like for you in the specific place that you're sitting and receiving this. But let's all get ourselves prepared to be with our Heavenly Father and allow Him to speak to us. Heavenly Father, King Creator, You are the anchor, steady and strong. Your Word is forever, Your name is the center, Heavenly Father. I need you more than an answer when I'm uncertain your will be done and though I can't see you I'm learning to trust you Father I need you every need I'll ever have you know before I come to you with all my heart desires. You're all my heart desires. God, I surrender. You hold my future. You have been faithful. Forgive me when I forget you, God, I surrender. Every need I'll ever have, you know before I even ask. So I come to you with all my heart desire. In a way. Love comes running as I draw. 
Father God, I thank you for the words of that song that remind us that we are here to know you and be known by you. And I thank you in this moment that you are available to speak to us in an amazing way. I pray that as we look to your word that all distractions would subside and that we would have a focus on being with our Father and letting you tell us who we are. You're amazing, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that we have this access to you. I pray in Jesus' name that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we would sense a new revelation of who you are in these moments. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this is where it gets exciting because we are about to open the Word of God. And when I say that, I think there's an assumption for so many of us to just think about the Bible and this collection of 66 books and go, great, a bunch of historical stories that I don't understand everything about. But I want you to consider the phrase, Word of God. I think so many people stay frustrated that our God can't be seen visually or heard audibly And yet, we read in the scriptures that the vision and the voice of God are the Word of God. And so when we open up our Bibles, let's just take a second and remember that this is how our Heavenly Father speaks to us. And if there is something about this that's not getting through to us in a powerful way, the problem is not the Bible, the problem is us and our hearts being in a position to actually receive it and our minds working with an effort to comprehend what he is saying. So I hope you brought your Bible with you. If you have your Bible right now, hold it up. Hold it up in the room that you're in. Hold it up. I hope that all over Auburn, Alabama, all over wherever you're watching this, there are Bibles in the air. If you have your Bible, turn to the middle of it with me to Psalm 139. Psalm 139 is where we're going to be living at church at home today. And this is one of the most powerful and one of the most popular psalms in all of the Bible, written by King David, like many of the psalms were. And we are going to take a moment and allow Psalm 139 to speak to us right where we are today. Now, part of the frustration for many of us receiving the voice of our Heavenly Father is that we don't really have a framework for taking the verses on the page and letting them become the words of our Father in our hearts. What I want to do today is provide a structure for how you and I can read the Word of God and let it sink deeply into our hearts to transform our lives. And to do that today, we're going to do it through an acronym. And that acronym is the word REAP, R-E-A-P. And we'll go ahead and let you note takers get this down because it's going to drive you crazy if you can't fill every blank by the end of this. I'll give it to you from the beginning. The R stands for read. The E stands for explain. The A stands for apply. And the P stands for pray, reap. The reason why that word reap is so fitting is because Jesus describes the word of God as seed that is sown. And as seed grows in the ground to produce a crop, the Word of God, when it is received in our lives, is planted. But what we want to do is go past simply receiving the Word of God. We want to see the Word of God produce results in and through our lives. And we want to reap a lifestyle 
of hearing from our Heavenly Father and seeing how much that affects every other area of our lives. Now, here's what I don't like about giving you an acronym. I don't want you to become a machine. I don't want this time to become a set standard. Well, I got to do my reading, my explaining, my applying, and my praying. No, I'm giving you this framework because as you start to do this, it will become automatic for you. When I get alone with God, I don't go through R-E-A-P. I've been doing it for so long that all of those things just happen naturally. I know I need to read it and actually see it, and then I need to let myself explain it and make observations, and then I need to apply it to my life, and then I also need to talk to God so that it's solidified and sealed in my heart. So these things are not going to become a machine that you follow step by step every single time you get alone with God. If you do this long enough, it will become second nature to your Bible reading and to your prayer life. And so let's do this one at a time, R-E-A-P. We're gonna reap from one of the greatest chapters in the entire Bible. Are you ready for this, ACC? Look at the person next to you, say, I'm ready for this. Are you ready for this? I'm ready, like legitimately talk to the person next to you. Don't just laugh at me on the screen. Are you ready for this? Here we go. Let's start with the R, read. Now that might seem simple. We need to read Psalm 139 in whatever translation is in front of us. But this has become more difficult for us in 2018 than I believe in any other generation because our minds struggle to focus on more than one sentence. We are the social media, text message, email generation. And so before you read Psalm 139, I want to challenge you to actually put yourself in a position where you can read. So maybe if you have an Apple Watch like I do, you need to put it on Do Not Disturb and theater mode so that the light doesn't even come on. To, we get distracted so easily, y'all. Maybe you need to put your phone on airplane mode. You need to prepare yourself to actually be able to read a section of scripture and read it and see it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you the time to sit down by yourself and read this. And we're gonna put four minutes on the clock. That's time for even the slowest reader in the room, like me, I'm a slow reader, so I feel you, struggle's real. That's time for everybody in the room to focus long enough to read the verses of Psalm 139. Now, before you read a section of scripture, it is so important that you know who wrote it and why they wrote it whenever that information is available to you, because you need to know the context in which it was written. So in any given book of the Bible, I want you to look up who the author is and what the intention was so that you can truly read into what's happening in the story. In Psalm 139, you got David who had an amazing life. He had a crazy life of some up and down circumstances but God used him in a powerful way. We don't know the exact circumstance that Psalm 139 was written into, but we do know that the context of the life of David was a life that looks like your life and my life. Some amazing victories, some tragic defeats, but a God who is constant and steadfast throughout his entire life. Life. And so as you read Psalm 139, I want you to have in the back of your mind, this is King David, the shepherd boy who killed Goliath and became king of Israel. We are going to read into King David's personal relationship with God. And I want you to enjoy this as you do. If in any of these points you need more time, just pause this video and spend that time in your groups. The goal is not to go through the video in the times allotted. The goal is that God would speak to us through our community together. So let's put four minutes on the clock, read this at your own pace, and then we'll come back.
Hopefully you had plenty of time to read through all of Psalm 139. And if you read what I just read, you're probably flipping out about some of the truths that you can derive from Psalm 139. I mean, how amazing is this? Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence, David says. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. And what about this one? I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. There's some incredibly deep truths in Psalm 139 and some incredibly popular verses that many of us have heard over time and now we see them in real time in the scriptures and it's so amazing just to read the Word of God. Now that you've read it and hopefully spent some time trying to comprehend what's there, we're going to do part two of our REAP acronym. So part one was read. Everybody say read. Say read out loud right where you are right now. Part two is going to be explain. Now part of the problem when we get alone with the Word of God is we skip straight from reading to trying to figure out how it applies to our lives. The step that I think a lot of us need to work on is spending the time to make observations based on what you see. We're in such a big hurry to figure out what we need to change about our lives and what this verse means for us. We don't really take the time to look at the scriptures and observe what's actually there. So before we talk about what this means for your life and before we talk about what you got out of your reading, I want you in the group that you're in right now, maybe you're just with your spouse on the couch, maybe you're in a community group and there's 20 people in one room. Some of y'all have hundreds of people in a field right now. But in a small group, maybe three or four people, I want to do the E in our acronym, explain, and I want to do it together. Now the purpose over the next few minutes is going to be that you take the time to share what you are seeing in the Word of God. And so make observations. I want you to tell us, okay, I, I noticed that this says, how precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Now there's some amazing observations right there. The first one being that God has thoughts. That's amazing. I think it's important that we stop and go, God is thinking about something right now and that his thoughts are actually aimed at loving you and aimed at loving me. This is amazing. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand on the beach. And I want you to talk through in your group some of the things that you noticed, some of the things that you observed, even some of the crazy parts, like in verses 19 through 22, where David kind of loses it and talks about the things that are stressing him out with wicked people all around him. I, I don't know what stood out to you, but before we apply this to our lives, let's take time in groups. We're gonna put five minutes on the clock and I want you to spend time going through Psalm 139 and naming what did you see and what did you notice from the Word of God and then we'll come back and apply it to our lives.
Well, hopefully your group is finishing up and you have plenty of time to make observations from the Word of God about what you read. And the great thing about Psalm 139 is that it is so rich with content that is so powerful. From the beginning verses about the sovereignty of God, even verse one, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. We could spend a year on that right there, that our Heavenly Father knows us fully and completely and still loves us. And then as you go through these passages, I hope you're overflowing with observations that the Word of God has spoken today. But now we're going to get to the fun part. And so we've read the Word of God and considered what's actually on the page. We've explained and observed what's in front of us. And now we get to step into the application. The A stands for apply. And the reason why I said this is the fun part is because this is the relational part. This is where you take what is said on the pages of Scripture and experience it as the voice of your Heavenly Father to your life. And so what I want to do in the time that we're going to give for Apply is I want you to consider how do these truths for King David impact what you are facing in the here and now. So for many of you, when you read about the sovereignty of God, the total control of God releases and relieves you of the anxiety that you feel trying to control so much about your life. For many of us struggling with insecurity, these verses in Psalm 139 are some of the best in the entire Bible for insecurity. It says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your value as a human being goes back to the value of your Creator who carefully knit you together as a human being and put you on this earth and you are more valuable than you could have ever imagined. Insecurity gets released when we allow the Word of God to speak to our lives. And then you get down to this section. And I want to share with you for me, when I read Psalm 139, how it applied to my life in the here and now. So many of these verses are so beautiful and amazing and they feel so good even as they sink into your soul. But then you get to verse 19 and it's like, what? David, did you start writing another Psalm all of a sudden? Like what happened? He goes from when I am awake, I am still with you. So let's read verse 19. It says, If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them as my enemies. Wait. Wait. What? If you're reading Psalm 139, you got this beautiful account of God's control over every detail in the human story. You got this amazing section of verses about how we were created and formed by God. And then all of a sudden, David wants God to kill people. And you read this and you're like, David, did you, did you lose your mind there for a second? Like what was going on? And I think the tendency when you read this is to think, well, well, maybe something crazy happened and he wrote this in different parts. No, this is one prayer. This is one psalm. And I think it fails to seem strange the more you consider what real life is actually like. Listen, our times studying the Bible are not meant to be disconnected from reality. And so David goes from this beautiful prayer about the goodness of God into, God, I got these enemies and my life would be a lot less complicated if you would just wipe them out. If you would just end their existence, I would love that. I count them as wicked. I know you count them as wicked. And so would you just take care of my problems for me? This is real life. And so for me, when I got to the application piece of how Psalm 139 affects and speaks to my life, I have a tendency to believe 
that my problems will be solved if only God would do that one thing I want him to do in the here and now. And I want you to watch how David concludes the psalm. This is so powerful and and what I believe is the culmination of church at home this time around. He says this in verse 23. He says, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So David goes from, God, if only you would do this to them. If only you would change this about my circumstances. If only you would. And then he goes, search me. Know my anxious thoughts. Test me, God. See, David sees what so many of us need to see about the scriptures and about our times with God is that God does not exist to wave a magic wand and solve all of our problems. God exists to be our heavenly father and remind us that the issues that we think are so external are actually internal. And David goes, the problem is not them. I think the problem is them, but you know what, God, here's what I realized after time alone with you. The problem is me. Search me and know my anxious thoughts. How relevant is that for the age of anxiety that so many of us are living in? He invites God into his circumstances and points out, you know what? The release from my anxiety is when I invite you, God, to bring your sovereign control over the universe and over my life into this moment in the here and now. And I can walk in the way everlasting despite my enemies and despite their issues and despite all that I want to change. And now all of a sudden I'm leaving my time with God and going, I can find peace without a change to my circumstance because I found peace in a change to my perspective. That's what we want to happen over the next few moments. So here's what we wanna do. We're gonna put three minutes on the clock and we wanna invite you to get your journal out, get your notes out, get maybe your phone out if you have nothing else to write with and put on paper or on a screen What do you think your heavenly father is speaking to you through Psalm 139? And as you do that, invite the Holy Spirit. Oh God, okay, we've read this. We've explained what it means. Now, what are you showing me in the here and now in the situations that I'm facing? And you can get specific. God is saying this about my relationship with my dad. God is saying this about my marriage. God is saying this about this uncertainty. I don't know what it is for you, but this is where the word of God goes from words on a page to the bread of God that feeds our souls in the here and now. So take three minutes, apply this to your life, and then we'll come back one more time.
So we've taken time to read Psalm 139 and we've taken the time to explain it and observe what exactly is in this passage. And now we've applied it to our lives in the here and now. There's one more step to complete our REAP acronym and that step is called PRAY. I believe that prayer connects us to the Word of God like nothing else we can possibly do. And the Word of God is incomplete without prayer, and prayer is incomplete without the Word of God. And if you're hearing me and you're like, well, I don't know how to pray either. I need like a video about prayer, maybe a four-step acronym for P-R-A-Y. Good news, that was actually our last Church at Home video. So right after this, you can watch that and step into a prayer life that has a framework for you connecting with your Heavenly Father. But when we go to pray after reading the Word of God, I believe that this is the moment where we connect our hearts to the heart of God. So as we step into this time of prayer, we want to ask that you would get in groups once again. It could be the same groups you were in before. You could form new ones. That doesn't really matter. And we want you to take time to pray through what God has just spoke in a powerful way through His Word. And so maybe you want to get in your groups and before you pray, you want to share, what's the one thing that you're the most anxious about right now? How powerful would it be if our church family was battling in prayer for one another about things that just got revealed through the Word of God? So we want to invite you to pray for each other and what you're going through currently. We also want to invite you to pray for our church. Our church is in an incredible season of watching God move in powerful ways. And many of you know that we're stepping into a contract on 17 acres off Hamilton Road where we believe God is going to expand our capacity to reach more people with the compassion of Jesus. And more than we need to call for more support to come in, we need to call on God through prayer as a church family again and again and again. We're not going to put a timer up on the screen. We want you to spend as much time in prayer as you want to spend in the groups that you are in right now. And we hope more than anything that this time was exciting and a time of connection with your Heavenly Father. But we hope that this overflows into your daily time, letting the God of the universe speak to us because the finished work of Jesus on the cross has given us unlimited access to our Heavenly Father. Let's step into that. Let's let His peace overwhelm our hearts and let's seal this time with prayer as a community. How exciting is it that people are praying all over Auburn and all over the country, maybe even all over the world together right now and battling for one another as a church family. We love being a part of this journey with you and we hope as you pray that you seal this time staying connected to your Heavenly Father. Because of the finished work of Jesus, we have been given unlimited access to God the Father. The blood of Jesus seals our forgiveness. The resurrection of Jesus seals our eternity. How can we not step in to being loved by our Heavenly Father when He is so available to us? So let's be a church that doesn't just sow in the Word of God, but reaps a harvest through the truths that are available to us every single day. Let's be a church that lives a lifestyle of dependency on God. We are for you. Go be the church and let your Heavenly Father love you today.